Hello everyone, my name is Katie. I am the creator of Incinity. Today we're going to talk and work with some cheat glitter. I um, want to say thanks for joining me. If you care to, show me some love by subscribing, hitting that thumbs up, or sharing if you think this video may be able to help someone. Alright, let's go ahead and jump in and get this started. Hello, hello. So, we need to talk about cheat glitter. What is it? how to use it, and why I love it. So Cheat Glitter from It's Pretty Personal has a whole line of cheat glitters. What is cheat glitter? Cheat glitter is an iridescent glitter that depending on your base color can take a spray painted base and make it look like it is all glitter. Um, depending on your base color and your cheat glitter of choice will depend on your overall outcome. So this video I did, um, I used Mistress and, um, let me see here, let me find it. That's the extra large. So the Mistress um, throws off um, lots of different rainbow colors. I don't know if it's, the camera's gonna pick it up really well. Um, this is a finer version. There is also a Mistress XL that is much larger that does the same thing. It's going to throw off several different rainbow colors. This is the cup we did that has Mistress on it, and I just don't think my camera is going to pick up the different colors. Super, super pretty. So this cup was just spray painted pink and white, and then I put the Mistress over it. I used um, a glue and then sprinkled my glitter on. Do you have to do it this way? No. So the white you see in these glitters will not show up on your coat, on your cup. <laughs> now, if you use too much cheek glitter, it does show some of the white and it can give it kind of a cloudy look. So you wanna kind of practice a little bit and get your amounts down. So there is a whole line of cheek glitter, as I mentioned before. Um, we have Girl's Best Friend, which um, gives off some kind of green and, and pink hues. There's also a Chunky Best Friend. You can sprinkle these on depending on your base color you want to use. Like, you can use them on any. <laughs> the sky's the limit. Use your imagination. I actually like to use some cheek glitters on black cups because it gives it like touch of neon on black is super, super cool because it gives it, um, really pretty rainbow hues and it just changes the whole feel of it. Um, we have touch of violet, which works really, really well on purples. Um, I'm going to put up a chart that um, you can find in the Cheat Glitter group on Facebook. I will have the link to that um, posted below. Um, lots of helpful information in there. We also have Shattered Glass. This is a really light and fluffy cheat glitter. Um, I love it. It's really, really pretty. We have Chunky Touch of Silver. This one is good for all kinds of colors. Um, it just gives it that little extra sparkle that you kind of want. This is Pinch of Rose. Now, if the cheat glitter says Pinch of, that means it's an epoxy additive. So you're gonna want to mix just a little bit into your epoxy because it's super, super, super fine. It's um, really powdery and um, it'll get everywhere if you sneeze. <laughs> but anyways, so this is an epoxy additive. Anything that is a pinch of is an epoxy additive. There is also a pinch of Mistress um, that I used on this cup that it's probably not gonna pick it up, that you can just see those little tiny sparkles that give off all different kinds of colors. Um, super pretty. Um, I wanted a little bit bigger of a cut for my spray painted base um, to give it a little more sparkle. So the pinch of, regular, and then XL. So depending on how big you want your sparkle, will determine what size you want to use. Um, we also have Touch of Rose that is not the pinch of. The pinch of is an epoxy additive. So this one I would use, um, you can mix it in your epoxy always. You can use any of the cheats mixed into your epoxy or you can apply glue and sprinkle some on there. Um, get creative, mix your cheats because it, 
ends up super cool effect sometimes depending on the look you're going for. Um, there's times I have different ombre cups that um, are different colors and so I will use the appropriate sheet on the appropriate color to kind of give it the extra wow. Um, touch of neon, I mentioned this one. This one um, has lots of purple in it, looks really, really awesome on neon colors. It is not the same purple as the touch of, um, touch of violet. It's a little bit different. And this one kind of, I want to say it has a little bit of blue in there as well. So um, really cool for neons. Um, chunky touch of gold. Also a really good all around sheet, depending on the look you're going for. This one looks excellent over oranges. Um, I, I like to use it on orange. It looks good over red, I think. Um, it, it can throw a little bit of green, so you want to be careful not to use too much. Um, so Touch of Gold is a chunky and a fine. I don't have all of the sheets, so I'm missing Touch of Blue. And that might be all. I, I'd have to go double check. It's on my list to get in my wish list. So, and then there is a chunky cheat, which is... Um, not as rainbowy as the mistress. So this one is mistress and this one is the chunky cheat. So chunky cheat is more kind of blues and this one is lots more rainbowy colors. So even these, even though they're chunky, they're it's an opal iridescent glitter. So whatever base color you put it on, it's going to enhance that base color and it's going to give it a little bit of colored sparkle. As I said before, you can mix it into your epoxy, you can glue it on. A lot of people like to use spray adhesive and apply it that way. Um, and then once you get your epoxy on there, the white will kind of go away. If you use too much and you end up having kind of a cloudy look over your base, um, just take some of that, swipe it off and add a little bit more epoxy and rub it in and that will help kind of level things out. So I hope this answers your, any questions you may have about cheat glitters. Um, there's a whole line of them. Check it out. It's prettypersonal.com um, or cheatglitter.com. And um, I will also post the cheat chart that she has that um, lists, it kind of shows you a bunch of colors and what cheat will work best for what colors. But that does not mean you have to use it on those colors. Experiment. I, once upon a time, <laughs> when there weren't so many cheats, took a board and... Um, used spray paint and I spray painted a line of each color and then I put the cheats on there and I epoxied it. And um, it was really, really cool because I could see so many different colors and so many, um, how each one changed the color and gave it a different sparkle. So that's something you can maybe think about doing because it's really neat to have that as a reference. Um, I think these cups are super classy looking. That's actually how I sell them. This is my classy option for my cups. Um, I just think it's classy. So that's what I decided to go with. So anyways, enough rambling from me. And I hope you enjoy the video on how we made this cup. Have a good day.
All right, we are ready for our glue and our glitter. I am using my preferred adhesive is Tack It Over and Over by Aileen's, and I mix it with um, about 40 or 50% water, usually about 40 for my glue. Um, I love this stuff as my adhesive. It's my go-to instead of Mod Podge or whatever. All right, so here we go. We're just gonna go ahead and slap this on here. Make sure to get all the way to the top and all the way to the bottom. Get your bottom nice and good. All right, now we are ready for our glitter. So we are using Mistress. Get a piece of paper to catch our glitter. We are using Mistress. This is not white. This is actually going to give us a whole bunch of rainbow colors. This is why it's called a cheat glitter, because once we put this on here, it's going to enhance the pink and the white while giving us lots of different sparkles, but not diluting it with the white. So it's going to look like it was pink and white glitter versus pink and white spray paint. And I'm just gonna sprinkle a good amount on. You can go as little or as heavy as you want. The heavier you go, depending on your base color, um, it could mute your color if you use too much. Like down here in the pink, if this was a little bit darker of a pink and I used too much of the mistress, it would, um, the white would make it look a little cloudy. Make sure I got the top and the bottom and good even coverage all around. Now we're going to get the bottom of our cup. All right, so there we have that nice even coverage all the way around. I don't think it's gonna pick up the different colors of sparkles, maybe a little. All right, so we will go ahead and go to epoxy. Next, I'm not going to seal this. Um, if I'm doing one color, I won't worry about sealing it. Um, if I'm doing more than one color, I mean, it, it doesn't matter if you seal it, but um, you don't have to for this particular cup that I'm working on. All right, we are ready for round one of epoxy and here we go. I am using tumbler epoxy from Babs Designs. And I'm gonna do, do, you know, a fairly decent layer on here. Um, so that way I can hopefully get out of doing another layer before I do decals, which it shouldn't be a problem. All right, feels like we got pretty good coverage, so we will just go ahead and let this spin and level out for a few minutes, and then I will come back and hit it with just a little bit of heat to make sure we don't have any air bubbles in there. Okay, so I'm going to use my embossing gun. It's been used a little. 
I always like to warm it up for just a minute, let it get nice and hot before I put it over my tumbler, and then I'm just going to quickly swipe um, about two inches above my cup fairly quickly. Um, I let my cup spin two rounds while using my embossing gun, and then I call it good. All right, now we're going to measure. I do my cups bottom to top. So I just kind of guess we're just over nine inches and I want it to take up a good part of this one side. So I'm going to go ahead and go seven inches. That'll give me roughly an inch on the top and an inch on the bottom. And then on our other side, we're going to have the state of Idaho and I'm just eyeballing it to kind of see where I think I will like it. And I'm going to say probably three and a half inches wide. And I don't want to go more than four and a half inches long. All right, so then we will go over to our computer and get our images ready. All right, here we are in our Cricut software and I have typed my image and I already had this image created from the last time I made her cup. Just so happened to be I save it. I don't normally save things that long. So we're going to go up here and make our cup at seven or our <laughs> our name at seven inches and then this one I think we said what three and a half and we wanted it to be four so we can go a little bit bigger than that um, let's go four and a quarter so it just barely starts to drape down into that um, that pink all right so four and a quarter there we are and then we will just go to make it and we will cut these out Okay, so I am using a shiny holographic. So what I do to cut this on my Cricut, I put my dial at custom settings. I use an Air 2. And then when I go over here, continue, we're ready to cut. And then when it says set base material, you can go over here that says browse all materials. I already have it as one of my favorites because I use it all the time. But anyways, I'm going to show you. So browse all materials. It gives you all of these options. So you'll just go down to vinyl. That's paper, vinyl, and then pick um, whichever one is best for what you're cutting. So I'm going to go premium volley premium vinyl holographic hit done and then I'm going to go to more all right now we're ready to cut or insert and that did not go in let me redo that see what happens when I try to do things one-handed hold on all right and now it's going to cut I won't fill all of this all right, so we have cut out our holographic vinyl. Now, this stuff not always likes to cut all the way through. So how to solve this problem? Do not hit this. No, 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 no. Hit the cut again. It will cut in the exact same line as you had before. So you will make sure you have a complete cut and it will be super easy to weed. So just remember, do not eject your mat, just hit cut. All right, I want to show you guys how easy this is to weed now that we have cut both of, we cut twice. Look, holographic vinyl, bam. Okay, so that one's easy, right? Easy shape. So let's do this one. Just pulling it. No, no fancy smancy tools. No trying to push it to get it out. Super duper easy, super fast. Double cutting this holographic makes all the world a difference. Here I'm using a weeding pin. It is seen better days. I've had it forever. Um, I got mine at 431 vinyl, used to be 651 vinyl. I love, love, love it for weeding. All right, so there we have her name. And then we have the Idaho. Oh, 
Look how easy that was. And we're done. Just by hitting that cut button twice, it makes a huge difference. All right, next we will be putting on our decals. Well, first we're gonna sand our cup and then we're gonna put on our decals. All right, this is what we are going to use to wet sand our cup. This is 600 grit, I believe. Yes, 600. So what you do is you're just gonna take some water, put your tumbler, get your tumbler wet, you want to make sure it's nice and cured for this part. This cup has been cured for 24 hours. Okay, and you just take your sandpaper. Now we are ready to place our decals on our nice smooth washed cup. So the first one we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and do the Idaho home. So let's see. Let's see if I have, I always stick pieces of transfer tape all over my table here. So I was looking to see if I have them big enough, but I don't. So we'll go ahead and cut another one. off of there this does not come in sheets I um I just happened to use a full sheet of it the other day and just wrapped it back around all right so just make sure that's all nice and flat. Every corner and everything is nice and adhered, all sticky. I'm gonna go ahead and trim this a little bit because it's quite messy. Okay, that's good enough. All right, so the way I peel this off of my backing is I just, Turn it upside down and peel away. And it's stuck to my H there. All right. So now we just have to place it on our cup where we want it. Good rub down. And then we will peel off our transfer tape and hope that my image is somewhat straight. All right, so there is our Ada home. And then on the opposite side, so I'm just gonna kinda, I, what I do is I just take my fingers and I put it down and so I can kinda get it on my towel so it's nice and level. Okay, that's gonna be about good there. All right, so now we will take, I'm just gonna kinda eyeball my name for a second here. Now these fonts that have the they swoop down and swoop up. You know, I think I'm gonna go, I think I wanna put a little diagonal. Do I, or do I wanna go straight up and down? Her other one was straight, straight up and down. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick with that. I have a little flaw in my epoxy right here. And it's gonna, I'm gonna sand this before we put that on there because I can feel it and I don't want it to show through the holographic. I'll be right back. 
All right, so our image is seven inches long. Our cup was just over nine inches long. Well, it's like nine and almost nine and a half. I'd say nine and a quarter to where my little line is down here. So I've marked it one inch from the, the bottom and we're gonna go an inch and a quarter from the top. Just so I can kind of help guide my name to be straight because I am terrible at getting them even and straight. So I'm just marking everything out. And now make sure that you erase your pencil marks before you, <laughs> you go back to epoxy. All right, so we're just gonna put this along our little pencil marks so we can see. where our inch line is. If I can get it on there, good grief. Okay, so now we have the back of our cup, right? So I kind of want to figure out where my middle sizes on my name. So I'm going to start at the tallest point. And I'm going to go down to the lowest, which is going to be almost three inches. So one and a half inches is going to be half. So I'm going to find my center where I want the center of my name, right? It's going to be right through here. So I'm going to just kind of eyeball it and mark one and a half. That way I am not getting my image, you know, too far over and whatnot. So, okay, let's go ahead and get this baby on here. Got my big piece of transfer tape that I'm reusing. My scissors suck. I just need to throw these away. I have other pairs in my drawer. Those just happen to be the ones that I grabbed. Okay. And I always put my names from the bottom to the top because I figure places like Coca-Cola know what they're doing and they read bottom to top. So that's why I do it the way I do, unless my customer requests something different. Okay, sorry if I was out of frame for that. I wasn't really paying too much attention. Okay, so I'm going to line up where my bottom section is going to be there, right? About there. And I'm just going to slowly drop that down and that should be pretty darn close. All right, now I just make sure I get that all rubbed on there real good and so it's going to stick nice and well. our lines raise our middle line and our top lines all right so there is the name Guess I can turn it the right way. <laughs> and our Idaho. All right. 
Next thing we're going to do is we are going to seal and then we will let that dry and then we will um, epoxy again and then it should be pretty close to done. Um, I need to clean up this top rim a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and sand that just with some sandpaper in my hand. In fact, we'll do that real quick right now. Okay, my rim is pretty smooth on this because I just used um, the cheek glitter, which isn't real thick and there wasn't a lot of it. So I'm just gonna quickly with my hand Now I'm not getting on the very, very top. I'm just getting on the side along the upper rim. It looks like I'm doing the top, but I'm not. <laughs> if there is something on the top, I just um, peel it off with my X-Acto knife. That way I'm not getting a bunch of sanding marks on my, where everybody's mouth is gonna go. Well, maybe not everybody's, but at least hers. If she's not using her straw, I suppose. Okay, that looks pretty good. And we'll make sure we wash that because anytime you do any kind of sanding, you wanna make sure you wash and that you let it dry for quite some time. Otherwise you're gonna have issues. All right, I use Polycuric, the clear gloss to seal over my vinyls. This helps ensure that my holographic vinyl is not going to lift. I use this sealer all the time. It doesn't take much. I just dip my finger in there and then wipe it all over the cup and it really helps um, make sure everything is sealed and make sure everything is good for our layer of epoxy so I don't have anything on my cup and I don't have any lifting of my holographic vinyl because that used to be a huge problem for me. Once I started using the polycuric, problem solved. So I love, 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 love this product. On to our first application of our epoxy after decals. I am using Tumblr Poxy from Babs Designs. I am just, I already did a thin coat and forgot to record, so I am just going back over this. Oops, off camera, sorry, I'm holding my, <laughs> my camera. And I'm just going to rub her in and get her all even, and then I will hit it with my heat gun after it spins for just a minute. Alrighty, here we are. Look at that shine and look at that sparkle. Eee, love it. Just taking a minute to appreciate the shine and I wanted to try to hit some different angles. If you look at the top of the cup, you can see how it has all those different colors of sparkles in it. It is amazing. I love Mistress as a cheat glitter. It throws off all those different rainbow colors. It's just beautiful. All right, here we are again with our cup. We are ready for our final layer. Super sparkly and super pretty. So we'll get good pictures of it later. I am going to wet sand this because it has been more than 24 hours since my last layer of epoxy. So I want to give it a light coat of wet sanding to make sure that my new layer has um, something raw to grab a hold of so that our epoxy is nice and strong. So I am using wet dry sandpaper. It's a 600 grit. Um, I reuse and reuse and reuse. So what we do with this is just get our cup wet. Move you up just a hair here. There we go. Okay, and then get our sandpaper wet. And this, my cup is really smooth. Um, already so I don't need to sand it for purposes of you know glitter chunks or bubbles or any of that stuff I am just sanding it to give my next layer of epoxy something to grip onto so it doesn't have to be a major sand we're just going to do a quick light sand and call it good and we're going to rinse it off real well Make sure I don't have any debris left on there. 
You can wash with um, Dawn blue dish soap. That's usually what I use. Um, and I'll probably do that. I just don't have any in this sink right now. So I'll probably go out to my kitchen and wash that. And I don't feel like taking my camera and setting it up out there. So anyways, here we are ready for our last layer of epoxy. So I'm going to go wash this with my Blue Dawn dish soap just to make sure I don't have any um, dust or anything left on there from our sanding. All right, we're mixing up our last batch of epoxy. Once again, I am using tumbler epoxy. And before you apply your epoxy, make sure that you check the level of your cup by placing it on the end of the cup and adjusting if needed so your bubble is in the center of the lines. All right, let's grab a glove and get ready to apply our epoxy. My cup doesn't look level, but it's my camera. My cup is level. So, got my glove on, and let's go ahead and apply our last layer of epoxy. So for my last layer of tumbler epoxy, I typically mix about 30 milliliters. There's more than that in this cup because I was doing other things while I was recording this video. Um, so for my last layer, I use less than I normally do because I just like to apply a fairly thin coat. So for this 30 ounce skinny, I am using probably a total of 15 to 20 milliliters to cover my cup. Got my handy dandy embossing gun, ready to hit it with some heat, just like we did earlier in the video. All right, now let's go ahead and take a minute to appreciate the shine and the sparkle of this baby. Look at that cheek glitter. All those different colors it's showing. The epoxy just makes it shine. Love it. So for this next part, I like to go over my holographic vinyl one more time, just in that area. I like to give it a good rub down to make sure there are no little teeny, teeny, tiny bubbles in there. Um, if there is, me by me doing this, it will allow those to rise to the surface. And once I have those all rubbed down once again, and I feel like I've gotten every spot really well and kind of made sure I've roughed up any bubbles that could be hiding down there, because that holographic vinyl shows everything. So once I have this all rubbed out, I will go ahead and hit one last time with my heat gun just briefly right over those areas, and then I'll let my epoxy go ahead and do its thing and level out. All right, there we have it. Our cheat cup is officially done. I like to call this my classy style because um, I just feel like they're really classy looking when they're finished. So I would like to say once again, thank you for watching and hanging out with me. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you do and watch for future videos.